There are some designer fragrances that are better than niche fragrances. Just because they're cheap doesn't mean they're worse. Kind of like how I'm a cheap impersonation of Andrew Tate, but that doesn't mean he's better than me. I remember when I was getting into fragrances, I think the first, the first niche fragrance I tried was Puff from the Molly's Leighton was a sample because I couldn't afford any of these big names straight away because they're big bucks. Now, I remember thinking to myself that, yes, instantly a lot of niche fragrances, you can see why they are different to designer fragrances. For clarification, a designer fragrance is a scent created by a brand that does other things apart from just fragrances. For example, Chanel obviously also make handbags, makeup, as well as other products, whilst a niche brand might be something like Parfum de Marly that only create fragrances. So their main speciality, all their focus is on fragrances. What does that mean? That means from a niche fragrance, you're gonna expect higher quality, packed full of natural ingredients. You're gonna expect much better performance and you're gonna expect a lot more creativity. They're not gonna be going for mass appeal as much as designer fragrances go for, because they're obviously trying to cater to a higher standard <laughs> of people with, uh, people with higher standards. The people go, going to niche fragrances are gonna expect something more creative, more interesting than the mainstream stuff. However, I found in my experience that as I got past the initial big names and niche fragrances like Aventus, Leighton, as well as other brands like Aqua de Parma, they, so, so they have some really good stuff, but they also have stuff that smells like designer fragrances. And I found that actually a lot of the times these brands, the same niche brands and designer brands will have the same perfumers <laughs> making the same, making similar quality of fragrances. Then you're paying for the marketing the packaging and the brand image at that point. A lot of times the designer fragrances are actually better than niche fragrances. Some niche fragrances don't perform, some niche fragrances don't smell that great, and some of them aren't that creative either. So this video, I'm gonna to display to you guys eight fragrances that I feel that are designer fragrances that are better than niche fragrances. Let's get into it. The first one I'm just gonna talk about because I don't own the bottle anymore, Dior Sauvage Elixir. I remember this fragrance came out with a lot of hype just after the uh, flat <laughs> Sauvage Parfum, which was okay, I tried it in stores. It, it was a little bit weak uh, for a Sauvage release, didn't cause that much uh, of, a, of a shockwave. However, Elixir got a lot of good reviews on Fragrantica. People were saying that it smells very different. There's something new in the Sauvage line, as well as uh, just having monstrous performance. I tried it in the store and I was very pleasantly surprised. It smells fantastic, but I was also just mortified by how strong it is. If you want a beast mode fragrance, this takes Sauvage in a much more spicy, dense, Less, less synthetic initially, but then it does go in a synthetic direction later on, but not enough to make it seem low quality. Like this is something I think you could have spent double the money on. I mean, if Creed released something like that, people would be pleased, they'd be surprised by Creed because it actually performs unlike most of their fragrances. So Sauvage Elixir, I think yes, you're gonna pay a lot of money for 50 mils, but for me, I actually found two sprays was too strong in the middle of winter. Obviously, I'm a sissy sprayer, guys, I'll admit it. I'm, I'm not ashamed of that. I gave away my bottle because I had a, a Middle Eastern friend who preferred it to me. Um, so I failed as an Egyptian. You know, I, my Libyan friend is now enjoying it. I hope he's still wearing it to this day. Tom Ford Beau Du Jour. Again, another one I love that I gave the bottle away. So in this video, we're not gonna include a private line of designer brands because that's kind of like a niche fragrance is their equivalent. So Tom Ford Beau Du Jour used to be a private line fragrance and now it's a signature line um, scent. I actually tried it out when it became signature line um, after a friend of mine who started getting into fragrances at the same time as I did. He was like, he told me, you know, you can get samples online, that's crazy. We both were like, well, yeah, it's, it's good fun. It's a good way to try lots of new fragrances. He got Beau Du Jour when it was a private line fragrance and got loads of compliments for it. He didn't like it on his own skin, but I loved it on his skin. I smelled it, I was like, like it smells incredible. Um, it sort of has this like barbershop clean soapy vibe with a sweet amberiness, kind of causing like a suntan lotion effect. It's very clean, but very modern, very sleek and powerful as well. You're getting the high quality, you're getting the performance and the versatility. That's the kind of signature that gets you a lot of compliments. 
got him compliments, got me compliments as well. The only downside of Beau Jour, I will say, is that it, it can be linear. It's, if for the whole 12 hours, it's a very linear fragrance. Other than that, it's one of the best modern day uh, Fougere fragrances, barbershop fragrances out there. Third fragrance is Prada L'Homme Intense. Depending on where you live, you may still be able to get this fragrance. It is officially, technically discontinued. However, if you can get it, you will appreciate that this can be niche. <laughs> like, this is like, well, a mid-range designer price tag. Um, I, this is one of the first fragrances I ever smelled. I accidentally smelled this when I was trying to get Chanel Allure Homme Eau Extreme because of the hype that Jeremy gave that. But I smelled this just because I walked past it and I was thinking, at the time I didn't appreciate it because it, it is, it is, can literally be a niche fragrance. It has a bit of challenge to it. It's got this very intense, powdery iris effect to it. It's very dark, sweet, but seductive and still clean. So it has this leather uh, nose in that it makes it clean. Fantastic performance, 10 hours with a good amount of projection. This, again, like if I, someone said this is 200 pounds, they put us in a Zergeoff bottle, you wouldn't question it, honestly. You, you would think to yourself, this is so nicely balanced. Fantastic performance, really creative perfumery. Still one of the best iris fragrances I've ever smelled. And I smelled really expensive niche stuff. I haven't smelled Gris, Char Gris Charnel, which apparently is a very good iris fragrance as well. But I can say hands down, this is way, way up there. Easily competes with niche iris fragrances. Moschino Toy Boy. I walked past this fragrance in the, in the department store because I thought the bottle looked really weird. Fair play to me, it does look weird. Um, I thought this was just gonna be another cash grab, like using a tacky, gimmicky bottle. And then I looked online and all these other reviewers were saying it's very creative and I was really surprised. I looked at the, at the note breakdown. This is natural smelling pear and rose for a very affordable price. Like sometimes when this is on sale, you get it for $30 sometimes, which is just insane. It's very natural smelling, very creative and very long lasting. I think this could have been in a private line Chanel bottle and marketed as unisex and I think this would have done better. I actually think this would have sold more if it was priced higher because I think just the psychology behind it would have worked better for this. Very underrated perfumery. Um, when it's men only, a lot of men will be put off by wearing rose, but I think everyone should try this. I think Toy Boy is a masterpiece and it's very versatile too. Terre de Remez Eau de Toilette. I can't remember why I tried this fragrance. I think it was because of Jeremy, my hero, back when he was normal. Um, he said this smells like strong, dirty orange, very professional, clean, and I, yeah, I agree with that. He's described it very well. I hated this fragrance when I first tried it because the, <laughs> the, the dirty orange effect at the beginning, it is a mature fragrance, it's very different. When your nose isn't so developed, it can put you off initially, but then you realize actually it's a masterpiece. Like, tell me a fragrance that has the distinct character, the complexity, but still the mass appeal, and the longevity, 14 hours, the versatility. This came out in 2006, and I think Rasasi have tried to clone this fragrance. I think there's some of these Middle Eastern houses have tried to clone it, but it's still unmatched. And unlike fragrances like Creed Aventus, which has plenty of good or you know superior clones, this is untouched. This shows the mastery by John claude Elena. And I think if you want to try masterful perfumery, it doesn't matter if it's niche or designer. Again, as I said, all marketing, it's all packaging. This just for the juice inside, it is up there, 10 out of 10. Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Cologne. I got this fragrance on the hype from the online community saying that, well, back in the day, back in the day it was a cheapie. It was a very cheap fragrance, 20 to $30. Now it's not because it's discontinued, which is very sad. It's the theme of today's video. All the great uh, fragrances are becoming discontinued. Um, so I thought back then, a lot of people like to blow air to these cheap fragrances, like Bentley from an Intense, like that disappointed me. People said it smells like a niche fragrance. It did not. <laughs> Most of the time, there is too much hype for some of these cheap fragrances. They do not smell niche. However, this one caught me by surprise. First of all, it's extremely creative. The Lomi de Al line is just creative in general, like a line based on the random notes of almond, and they do it in so many different ways that aren't redundant. It's all very creative in their own way. Like if I want, even Lomi de Al, the Parfum, the cherry, just very creative, that could be niche as well. This was $20, but I, this is one of the few fragrances I think if it was $150, people would not have batted an eye. It was long lasting while still being a fresh light summer signature. 
and it was just so beautifully done. It could have been one of those niche unisex fragrances. I don't think this is only masculine. So I'm gonna miss this. I think it was done extremely well. Um, I did not get many compliments of this, although when I smelled it on other people, I thought it was fantastic. I complimented them, but maybe it's just my, my uh, smelly skin that didn't work with this. Um, it wasn't exactly my style as a person, but I still appreciated how masterfully done this was. Guerlain in general is just a brand that is on another level. I can imagine a rich guy in the south of France, the rich yacht riding people in Nice or something like that would wear something like this in the summertime. Really tra traditional French perfumery done well elegantly for a steal of the price. Even now in its mid-range price tag, it's still worth getting. And then finally, we're ending this video with the two brands that we started it with, Tom Ford Noir Extreme. I think this was one of the first fragrances from Tom Ford that I tried, only because I saw online that it had a Kofi note. Now, if you guys have ever <laughs> looked at, like, I had no idea what Kulfi was. Um, so, Kulfi is like an Indian ice cream dessert that's very specific to the region that's served with spices or different flavors, pistachios. Um, you would think with a note like that, be, this would smell very synthetic, but no. First of all, that, that's Kulfi note is extremely creative. I've never tasted the dessert, but I feel like this, this will make me appreciate how it would smell just because I still haven't seen any other fragrance release use Kulfi, which is, it just shows how insanely creative that is. Someone's just, the perfumer for this has went and created that accord from lots, lots of different notes. Very creative. Um, this, but it still doesn't smell synthetic. It has very beautifully done florals, spices, the vanilla. This is one of the best date night fragrances ever created, in my opinion. This is just sexiness through and through. Fantastic performance, beautiful density. It just does not compare to most designer fragrances on the market. This could easily be niche. And lastly, Dior On Parfum. Again, the creativity here is off the charts. It's, it's creativity is over 9,000. Iris, leather, not seen this done as well or as creatively anywhere else. This is, one, this is something that's so niche and so challenging, it's actually quite tricky to wear this. I wore it the other day and I just appreciated how beautiful, it's like dark but still clean and complex, it has so much character. It will not smell like anything else you ever wear. Iris done to perfection. I think this is the, the culmination of all the creativity in the Dior online in general brought to its finale. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to struggle to see how this, as an iris fragrance, can be beat. The modern day Dior Homme 2020 and 2021 sport fragrances don't use iris, for example. They've kind of went away from that. I think, in general, Dior's older days are just more creative. This is beast mode performance. You'll get, yeah, all day easy. Like maybe people, some people say they get 24 hours of this. Like, it, it works really well in a lot of people's skin. Tricky to wear, but you look at the reviews of it online and you can understand why it's so highly rated and much better than a lot of designer fragrances, including Dior's own private line fragrances, which can be controversial to say. If I had to choose one fragrance to be the winner of today that would match that criteria of being a designer that deserves to be niche, I would say it's Tom Ford Noir Extreme. That's my winner. What do you guys think? Which fragrance have you smelled that you believe has taken that number one spot for you, something that you think is designer at the moment but could have easily been niche, which makes me grateful for these fragrances existing. We're getting bargains with the quality <laughs> that they provide. What do you guys think? Of course, there's a flip side that some niche fragrances will rob you blind. Hopefully, it creates an interesting discussion in the comments down below, guys. Make sure to check out our other videos where I talk about the best cheap fragrances. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.